We have uh, two primary topics to cover today, uh, both column selection and method development. Uh, the agenda we're looking at for the column selection is we will discuss the phase, the column ID, film thickness, and lastly, column length. Uh, the method development section uh, is relatively condensed. Uh, method development could, could last hours, uh, but in the time we have, we will touch on detector choice, uh, injection technique, carrier gas, and oven temperature. Uh, we'll have a brief slide just on a chromatogram index because uh, finding a picture uh, of, of what you want to copy or, or use is sometimes much more useful uh, than a bunch of, bunch of words. Uh, and we'll end up with a summary and uh, resources slide at the very end. Uh, so an optimized gas chromatographic separation really begins with the column. And the four parameters that we look at in, in order of, of priority uh, are the stationary phase, the column ID, the film thickness, and lastly, the column length. And we'll discuss each one of these parameters uh, and how it affects the performance of the column. <clears throat> the diagram we show here uh, is a schematic of what a column looks like. Uh, the white uh, 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 tube is the fused silicate tubing, very similar to fiber optic tubing. Uh, and inside that is coated a thin layer of the stationary phase, which is the, the chemistry. Uh, so most of the column is an open hole where the carrier gas goes through, and it's really a thin layer is, is the stationary phase. Um, GC columns have a, a coating of polyimide on the outside. Uh, that gives it the brown or the orange hue, uh, and that's really designed to give the fiber optic tubing the flexibility and the strength, because we want to coil these into a specific diameter to fit into the instruments. Now, the, the information that we will follow on column selection is relatively general. Uh, specific situations that you may have uh, may warrant exceptions uh, to the guidelines that we will discuss. So the first step, as I mentioned, is the stationary phase. Uh, we want to choose that before any other parameter. A few examples that are shown here uh, on the left-hand side is a polysiloxane polymer. Uh, the R groups can be uh, a methyl, a phenyl, a cyanopropyl, a fluorinated uh, side group um, uh, of different degrees. And, and, and polysiloxane polymers have been used in GC since 1952. Uh, polyethylene glycol is another common stationary phase. Uh, it is just repeating units of, of ethylene glycol, uh, and these can become very large. Uh, and these have been around also since the, uh, the late 50s. Uh, relatively new stationary phase are the ionic liquids. Uh, these are quite a bit different in the way they uh, are structurally uh, put together, uh, as well as how they behave compared to the polysiloxane polymers and the polyethylene glycols. But regardless of which stationary phase uh, that we're discussing, they all can undergo a specific combination of interactions, uh, interactions such as dispersive, pi-pi, dipole-dipole, uh, acidic-basic, uh, interactions and, or hydrogen bonding and, and a few others. Uh, but equally important, they each have relative uh, or specific relative amounts of each of these interactions. For example, a polysiloxane polymer that has 5% phenyl and 95% methyl can undergo both dispersive, which is what the methyl is going to give you, and pi-pi, which is coming from that 5% phenyl R groups. Uh, another stationary phase that has 50% methyl, 50% phenyl, can undergo the same two interactions, but since it's got much more phenyl in the, in the structure, it can undergo a relatively stronger amount of pi-pi uh, compared to the 5% phenyl. So it's equally as important not only what interactions a phase can undergo, but the relative amounts of each of those interactions to each other. The differences in the chemical and physical properties of the analytes and how they interact with the stationary phase really are the basis of the separation process. And retention time can be thought of as a measure of all those analyte phase interactions. And the separation is really achieved when the strength of those interactions differ for analytes. Um, also note that in, in increasing the temperature will weaken all of the analyte phase interactions but at different rates. Dispersive will weaken faster than pi-pi, for example. 
So we need to choose a stationary phase, and, and so where do we begin? Uh, there are really two strategies uh, for stationary phase. One are established applications where somebody has done something before that you may be able to copy. The uh, other one are new applications where you're developing uh, uh, an application for analytes that have never been tried to be done by GC before. So we'll discuss both paths. First, we'll start with the established applications. Where possible, use a phase that is stated in an existing method uh, from a, a promulgated uh, agency. Uh, basically, you're going to copy from others. Or we want to use a phase that's recommended by a column manufacturer. In that case, we're going to use what somebody else has learned. And you'll notice that many of the column manufacturers publish what they call column selection charts. Uh, and they're nothing new, they're, 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 but they're very, very useful. 